I got a video for the analog pilots today. Yep, if you fly DJI, this video is not for you. Sorry. Have you ever wanted to change your video transmitter output power while you were flying? Like, why can't you be at 25 milliwatts when you're flying close to yourself, but then if you know you're going to fly further away or you're going to fly behind a building, you like you flick a switch and it goes up to maximum power? Well, it turns out you can do that. Which really surprised me because people have been asking me about this for years and I have been saying, sorry, you can't do it. And it turns out I was wrong. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. There's a feature of Betaflight called Low Power Disarm. And if you're familiar with that feature, you may think this video is going to be about that. It's not. It's about another feature of Betaflight that I think 99% of you haven't heard of because I hadn't heard of it before recently. And if I haven't heard of it, I'm going to guess you haven't either. But let me show you Low Power Disarm real quick in case you didn't know about it because it's actually pretty cool too. So if we go here in the Video Transmitter tab, we can see there's an option, low power disarm. And uh, it can be set to off, which means that the video transmitter will power up at a certain output power and stay at that output power forever, like how it normally works. There is on, and what that does is when the video transmitter first powers up, then it is at 25 milliwatts, or the lowest output power it can support. Some video transmitters may do pit mode. I'm not sure about that. I think this is 25 milliwatts for most of them though. And then when you arm the quad, it goes up to whatever output power you've set, 200, 400, 600, whatever it is. And then when you disarm, it goes back down to 25 milliwatts. Now let's talk about like, why would you even want to do that? Because that actually plays into the, the second part of this video where I'll show you how to set an arbitrary output power by flicking a switch or pressing a button or turning a knob on your controller. Why wouldn't you just run full output power all the time? Just set it 800 milliwatts, plug in, blast 800 milliwatts, who cares? There's a couple reasons. One is the video transmitter heats up. When you're working on the bench with no props and no airflow, if it's blasting 800 milliwatts the whole time, it gets hot and it can actually shut down. Most video transmitters won't be damaged but they'll just stop working. And like, if you're trying to work on your quadcopter on the bench and it's shut down and you can't see the video, then you can't work on it. So having the quadcopter be at 25 milliwatts can be useful for that type of scenario. It also can help limit how much you blast other pilots. You ever plug in your quad and you're standing too close to another pilot and they go, ah, unplug, unplug. Well, you shouldn't have done that, but if you're blasting 25 milliwatts, it's going to be less bad than if you're blasting 800 milliwatts. So it could just be a courtesy thing. Now, the third option here is on until first arm. And the way that works is when you arm the quad, it goes from 25 milliwatts up to whatever the max out or whatever output power you've set. And then when you disarm, it stays there. It doesn't go back down again. It only stays at low power until the very first time you arm. And the reason that you might want to do this, and in fact, this is my preference, is that let's say you're flying and you're way far away out in the middle of a field somewhere and you crash your quad and you disarm. And now your quad is down and it's somewhere in this great big field and you don't know where. One way to track the quad down is to look in your goggles and kind of look, what do I see? What is the quad looking at? You can even use like a patch antenna on your goggle to kind of play hotter, colder and track down where it is. But if the video transmitter goes down to 25 milliwatts when you disarm, then you may not have any signal at all and it may make it harder for you to track down the quad. So personally, my preference is, or, or what if you land and do a perch? Oh, that's a good one. What if you're trying to be like Mr. Steel? So you go and you land on a building or something and you perch and you disarm. Now you're 25 milliwatts again and you lose video. Oops, that was bad. So my preference is to have it on until first arm. When I first plug in, it's at low power. When I arm, it goes to full power and then it stays there, but you can choose. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about the ability to just arbitrarily flip a switch and change to whatever output power you prefer. Now I should say in order to make any of this work, you have to have smart audio working or if you're using Immersion RC Tramp, it's Tramp Telemetry, but most people just say smart audio as a generic catch-all term, even though uh, only really TBS smart audio is truly smart audio. So you need to see in the video transmitter tab, device ready, yes. 
And you need to have your VTX table set up correctly as you see here. You need to be able to use these options here to change your channel and your output power before any of this will actually work. Now, if that's not true for you, I've got another video that I made about how to troubleshoot smart audio. I'll put a link to it down in the video description and you can go get your video transmitter working before you then come back here. The next thing I'm gonna to need to do is set up my controller. So let's do that. Uh, we're gonna to go to the Betaflight receiver tab just so we can see what we're doing. And in the controller, I'm going to press the model key and page to the mixer screen because I'm gonna to need to set up a control like a switch, a three position switch or something to control an aux channel to make all of this work. So here in the mixer screen, I'm gonna scroll down to find an unused aux channel and I can see here channel seven doesn't have anything on it and I'm gonna put a switch to control that channel and the way you do that, you've see, probably seen this before, I'm gonna click the jog wheel one time, I'm gonna go down to source, I'm gonna click the jog wheel one time to make source blink and then I'm gonna choose a switch to control this function like for example, this three position switch, I'm gonna flick the switch and you can see now that source is taking that switch as its source, I'm gonna hit return and return and return again. And we can see now that if I flip this switch, channel aux three moves to three different positions. Now it turns out that that three position switch is gonna be just about perfect for what I'm doing because the video transmitter that I'm using for this example only has three output powers, 25, 200, and 400, I believe it is. And this example that I'm gonna show you will work with other output, with other types of inputs or video transmitters with more inputs. But let me show you how to do it with just three positions and then we'll talk about how we could extrapolate it. Like for example, what if we were to use this six position here? Like if you had a video transmitter with six outputs. That would be pretty cool. Now the technique I'm about to show you, I first learned about it from this video by Schoen, Schoen Richtig. Um, this person has 28 subscribers, I bet they're about to get a few more. Uh, and and I this video came out in December 2019. I swear you didn't used to be able to do this except by using a Lua script. And I just assumed that was still true forever. So thank you to Schoen, Schoen Richtig for uh, making me aware of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the CLI. There is no way to do this in the GUI. And we're gonna use the VTX command. And the way the command works is, uh, let's try help VTX. Nope. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so the way the command works is you're gonna put in an index, an aux channel number, and then a band, a channel, and a power and then a start and end range for that aux channel. Oh, by the way, yeah, you can change the channel too. It's not just the output power, it's all of the above. And our VTX table as well to check our power values. Power values are 25, 100, 200, 400. But I don't think that's true. I think this diatone VTX, 25, 200, 400, yeah. It only has 25, 200, and 400. That's what we're gonna work with. So we're gonna type VTX zero. The index will always just go zero, one, two, three, four, five. It'll just count up. So this is the first line. So it's going to be VTX zero. Hey there, folks. Joshua from the future here. I have to correct something that Joshua is about to say. Uh, he's going to type VTX zero three. He's using aux three as his aux channel. So you would think that you would type VTX zero three and it would be looking at aux three. And that's not true because Computer programmers don't like to start counting at one. They like to start counting at zero, which means that if you're using aux three to control this, you need to put two here. It would be VTX zero two. And if you're using, if you put three here, you're referring to aux four. So this number where you indicate the aux channel, you actually subtract one from whatever aux channel you're actually using. Thanks computer programmers. Now for the VTX band and channel, I see in Shun's uh, example, he's got zero for the VTX band and channel. And you can see here, if we look at the VTX table, the, the, that is not a valid band or channel. I'm gonna guess that what Betaflight means is that a, a, a band and channel of zero means stay on the current band and channel. And then if you put a band or channel, then it would, it would change to that one. So we're gonna say zero, zero for the band and channel. Now we have to tell it what output power we want it to use. And the way it does this is a little bit 
unintuitive. I originally thought that they would have you just put the power value from the VTX table, but in fact, that doesn't work. And in fact, when I tried to do that, I got a parse error, which you can see here. What it seems like it wants you to do is just put one, two, three, four, five for your power, for your output power. So you're just going to look at power values here in your VTX table and count one for 25, two for 100, three for 200, or depending on what output power your uh, video transmitter and your VTX table has, you're just going to count up there. Seems like a kind of an oversight there, but I'm going to guess this is a feature of Betaflight that hasn't seen a lot of development. So to go to 25 milliwatts, I would type VTX 03001 for 25 milliwatts as my first output power. And then I need to put in a range of the aux channel that when the aux channel is within that range, we're going to go to this uh, VTX uh, settings. So let's say uh, from 900 to 1200 microseconds, then we're going to be at 25 milliwatts, 900 to 1200. Let's do another one. This is line number one. This is the next line. Everything else is going to stay the same. The aux channel is the same. The band and channel, we're not going to change that. We're going to go to output power number three, which in my VTX table is 200 milliwatts. And we're going to do that between, let's say, 1200 and 1800. So that's basically the middle position on the switch. And we'll do that one more time. And by the way, I'm pressing the up arrow. Uh, to go to recreate the previous line, you can just press the up arrow on your keyboard and then you can press the left arrow to go uh, VTX to go back and forth around VTX to two. This is the, the we count. We have line zero line one. This is line two and we're going to go to output power one, two, three, four, 25 to one, two, three, four. Okay. So that's output power number four. And we're going to do that between 1800 and I think it goes up to 2100 as the outside edge of the channel. Okay. And we're going to type save. Well, at this point, I need to plug a battery in to power up my video transmitter. Otherwise, I'll have no way of knowing that this worked. The video transmitter on this Diatone F5 Quad has clear LED indicators for its current output power. This red indicator here is showing the output power, and that's one of the reasons I chose it for this example. So you can see right now it's all the way to the left side, and it's at 25 milliwatts, but as soon as I arm, it jumps up to the set output power, which in this case is 200 milliwatts. But what I want to do is turn off low power disarm just so there's no confusion about who's controlling the video transmitter and see if this aux channel method can do it. And sure enough, if you take a look here, if I flick the switch to the middle position, it goes to 200 milliwatts and the down position, it goes to 400 milliwatts. That's pretty freaking cool. Now I told you earlier in the video that I would show you how to do even cooler stuff using this six position switch. And I, I sometimes struggle to think of things that this six position switch is really perfect, perfect for, but this really could be perfect for this because like, let's say that instead of changing output power, we want to change channel. We want to change channel just by pushing this switch. Like we could go from, well, we only have six options here and they typically are working with eight channels, but let's say we want to go race band one, two, three, four, five, six using this. Here's how we would do that. The first thing we would have to do is again, set up a mix with that switch controlling it. We'll highlight the aux channel we want to use and we'll click the jog wheel one time. We'll go to source and we'll click the jog wheel one time. And now uh, the, the source is blinking. And then just like before, when we flip the switch, this time we're just going to push that button, any of the six position buttons, to, and it will pick up 6P as the source for this mix. And now you can see in the receiver tab that aux three is changing positions based on that six position switch. And what we should probably do at this point is write down the position numbers, the, the channel position. So for example, in position one, it's at 988. In position two, it's at 1193. I should be writing this down. Now we'll go to the CLI and we'll start inputting those aux or those VTX lines. So the first thing I'll do is I'll type VTX table, just to have my VTX table handy to look at, and then I'll start putting in the VTX lines. And the first line, VTX zero, the index is zero because this is the first line. 
Um, uh, our aux channel is aux three. So we're gonna put two, we're gonna subtract one and put two as the aux channel. The band is gonna be race band. So it'll be band five, channel one. Output power, we're gonna put zero, should we? Putting the output power as zero will leave it at whatever output power it was previously at. Putting in a fixed output power, like we'll, we'll, we'll move it to that output power. Um, let's put zero and just leave it at whatever output power it was previously at. And then we'll put the aux channel range in. And for this one, so position one on the switch is 988 on the channel. So let's just say anywhere from 900 up to, uh, the next position is 1193. So let's say between 900 and 1100 will be on race one. And I'm just gonna press the up arrow. And uh, the next one will be race two. And that'll be between, uh, I guess I should say 1101. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter. 1100 to the next position is 1193. And the one after that is 1398. So let's say between 1100 and 1300 will be on race two, put another index, VTX one, aux, two, aux three, five, two, okay. All right, race three, this is index number two. We're gonna go to race band number three. The channel position is 1398, so it's gonna be from 1300 to the next one is 1601. So let's say from 1300 to 1550, or maybe 1500, yeah, okay. And then finally, index number five, race six, is gonna go from 1900, and the end of the range is 2100 is all the way at the top, so there we go, and we'll hit save. And once again, very conveniently, there is a channel indicator LED on this diatone video transmitter. So now I'm gonna begin pushing those one, two, three, four, five, six buttons and we should see it move, I hope. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm just changing channels, baby. I'm just changing channels by pushing buttons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, what channel are you on? Hey, don't even need to go to the menu. Don't need to do anything, just boop. Push button, change the channel. That's pretty freaking sick. You, you, you might want to like add like a momentary switch to this to keep you from accidentally pushing the button and changing channels while you're flying. Like advanced programming technique would be to force you to pull the, oh, that's annoying. To force you to pull the switch or something. But there you go. You could do that with a knob. You could do, you could do anything, right? You decide. Turn up your output power with a freaking, yeah. And by the way, you can have as many of those aux lines. Well, maybe not as many as you want. You can have a bunch of those aux lines. So if you wanted to, you could have one aux channel for power and one aux channel for channel. Yeah, that's pretty freaking amazing. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much uh, to Sh Shun, Shun Richtig or however it is that you say it, for uh, making me aware of this. Uh, actually, he wasn't the one who made me aware of this. I apologize to the unnamed person who pointed this out to me in my messages. I, I've forgotten who you were, but I, I very much appreciate it because this is, a, like I said, something that people have been asking for for a long time, and I thought it was impossible, so it is really cool to be able to show it to you. That's going to do it for this video, though. I have a whole playlist of Betaflight tips, tricks, and tutorials. I'll put that playlist down in the video description if you want to find more videos with both Advanced and OpenTX. You want to learn more about programming your radio? I'll put some of that all down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel, or, or maybe join my Patreon, or, or click, one of, click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>